Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Today, we continue our special series called Build Your Board, a That Sounds Fun podcast series in which we want to help you find the voices you need to live the life you want. Because in a world of influencers, you get to decide who is influencing you. And we've created that Build Your Board guidebook for this series, y'all. We have loved seeing your pictures of your notes and what you're taking away from each episode so far. Our hope is that by the end of this series, you will have a completed guidebook and the answer to the question, who is the next voice I need to help me build the life that I want? Just go to AnnieFDowns.com slash build your board to download your copy of the guidebook. And before we dive into today's conversation, I want to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. This is so relevant in today's conversation because we're going to talk all about therapy and counseling. And BetterHelp is a great option if you're wanting to give therapy a try. When you're in a season where it feels like your mind is racing all the time or you're needing to process big moments in your life or big emotions, therapy is such a helpful tool. And as we'll talk about today, a therapist may be the person you need to add to your board. Therapy has been a game changer for me. I am a better Annie because of the work I've done with my counselor over the past decade. If you want to give therapy a try, consider BetterHelp where your session can be done right from home. BetterHelp makes it so simple to get started. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. We love a quiz. And they match you with a licensed therapist. Finding a therapist that is the right fit for you is really important. And so you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. You're sure to be working with someone who is a good match for you. It's done entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and fit in your schedule. If you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way, I know that feeling. Like, you know what you should do, but you can't seem to do it. I know that feeling. Therapy helps you figure out what is holding you back. Be a good friend to yourself and your brain with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash That Sounds Fun today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash That Sounds Fun. Today on the show, we're continuing our Build Your Board series with licensed therapist, Melanie Rogers. You know, counseling has been a huge part of my life and growth, so I wanted to bring on a trusted counselor who could help us sort through the common questions so many people have when you're trying to figure out if you need a counselor and how you get started. Melanie is the founder of Come Alive Counseling here in Nashville, and we talk about your questions like, how do I know if I need a counselor versus a mentor, and how long do I need to be in counseling, and who can I trust as a counselor, whether you're a therapist yourself or a pastor or a leader, like, how do I find a therapist? I know some of you are all in on counseling, and others of you are unsure or uninterested, and I think this conversation is like a Counseling 101 starting place to help all of us figure out the role therapy can play either in short seasons or as ongoing support in our lives. So if you're following along with us in the Build Your Board guidebook, you're going to be taking notes for this one on page seven. So here is my Build Your Board conversation with Melanie Rogers. Melanie, welcome to That Sounds Fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. You're very welcome. I know this is not how you normally spend your time. (laughs) Well... (laughs) It's it's newer. But but today, um, will you kind of tell us uh, what you do and why you are the voice on this episode today? Because you asked me to Yeah, that's right. Because we're friends and you're (laughs) kind. Yes. Um, I'm a therapist in Nashville. I've been um, in the area for 22 years now and in private practice for eight, eight, nine years. Yeah. And I have a practice called Come Alive Counseling. Yeah. And there are usually four, three, four of us in the practice. We're kind of running out of office space now. So. Yeah. And we see men, women, couples. I do not see couples, but people in my practice do. Yeah. And the range of ages from high school kids upward. So. Wow. When you and I met, you were mm-hmm. a school counselor. Yes. Why did you make the switch to private counseling? I loved my time at the school, in the two schools. I think I felt limited in the work I could do within the limited time mm. that schools would allow yeah. um, and just wanted to do deeper work and had missed grownups, honestly. Yeah. I loved playing with kids, but I, I felt like I was more designed for kind of the deeper work with, mm. with grownups. Yeah. And, so I just I think my fear was being confined to four walls, yeah. um, but I knew I wanted to bring more of me to work. So you are truly one of the deepest wells I know, 
And so being with adults, I think, makes so much sense because you're like, I've got to go deeper than this. Yeah. And I I think the work with kids did certainly remind me of developmentally what a fifth grader is like and like what how they experience the world so that when I'm working with adults, I can remember oh, you were in fifth grade when that happened. Oh, wow. So I think my work with kids and, and adolescents really served yeah. um, my work with adults. Yeah. yeah. I know you're under a lot of what you can't say rules. One thing I will say is there are people people are hearing in this series that know you very well. There oh. are some of your people <laughs> in this series. And so mm-hmm. it's amazing your reach of who you meet with. You can throw a rock and hit someone that, sees Melanie Rogers as her therapist. I have no idea how you have time to do all this. How many clients can you see? How many do you have? Uh, I see around 24, 22 to 24 a week. Oh, Melanie. But that really, when you think about it, it's, I mean, it's about three, six a day, yeah. five, five to six, and I have an hour break. So it's kind of, you just find your rhythm and kind of how much space you need. And th- I just want to my goal is to be sustainable, yeah. to do this for a long time. Yeah. And so, and the great thing is I can change it. If there's a season where I need to do less, Yeah, I can do that. You have some control mm-hmm. over that. Mm-hmm. What is the thing? I mean, our, the title of this yeah. episode is, what's the deal with counseling? Mm-hmm. Because I, I went to a counselor as a kid um, when I was in second and third grade. So it's kind of always been a part of my life. I didn't know it was super weird. <laughs> and But a lot of Christians felt like it was, feel like it is? What's the deal with counseling? Why do Christians feel concerned about it sometimes? Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. Nashville is just a unique place. So I almost would better be better to answer that question from a different city. Right, because everybody here is in counseling. It's almost, it's not even where do you go to church? It's who's your therapist? That's why I know who who people see, who sees you, yeah. Um, I do wonder, I think, I can speak from my own experience, even in being a therapist, and but maybe in the Christian community, I I really had to struggle. This is, sounds ridiculous now, but through do I really need? This is crazy, but do I really need other people, or do I just need God? And is, I know that that sounds wild. No, but that is yeah. so many people are asking that this month. Yeah, as we're talking through this series. Yeah, and I know it just sounds. Because can't the Holy Spirit tell me? I mean, I I wrestle with that. Right, like, do but, I have to run every decision by someone or can't, doesn't the Holy Spirit teach me? Yeah, or somewhere along the way, yeah, I learned that maybe it's less healthy or less, there's something scary about needing people, mm. you know, and certainly there's a continuum of healthy need yeah. and unhealthy. But yeah. I think somewhere there's just some weird theology that kind of, has made people skittish of need. Yeah. Men more than women, or is it about equal? Uh, Again, here in Nashville. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. I see predominantly women. Yeah. I have some precious male clients, but I don't know that there's a difference among Christians, men or women. I think it's just more of a, I don't even want to stereotype that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I think our culture gives women more permission to need. Yeah. But that's really the only difference yeah. I see. I was at an event earlier this week, and two men that I'm friends with, I did not know they knew each other. And they weren't interacting at all. And then finally, as we're leaving, they go up and hug each other. And I was like, how do y'all know each other? And they're like, oh, we have a mutual friend. And I was like, is it someone I'm friends with? Who is it? And yeah. they're like, yeah, we have a friend. And I was like, yeah, but who? <laughs> and then they said a counselor's name. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should not have pushed that hard. Right. I just thought we had a mutual friend. And I was so excited. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, Annie, it's our our therapist. I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But I love that they were both like, yeah, this is, mm-hmm. they didn't say stop asking. They were like, yeah, this is a thing. I guess I didn't realize how unique that was to where we live. Mm-hmm. It really is. Talking to friends in different cities, not only is it so hard to find good therapists, there's just still a stigma. Yeah. with the, we. I don't feel like we face as much in Nashville. We're just, I feel like we're very therapeutically rich, yes. you know, and yes. yeah, so we're, we're just lucky to be in this kind of community. Yeah. How does someone know when it's time to seek a counselor? Yeah, I think that's changing because mm-hmm. I think there's a lot more permission um, now. You don't have to be, you know, in a in a crisis yeah. necessarily. But I would say when a couple of things, 
uh, maybe when emotions feel overwhelming or just you've kind of exhausted the resources like running is not working yeah, or exercise yeah. or, you know, more sleep or so that's, you know, people with distressing emotions, that's often what they present with. A lot of times there are like physical symptoms that are. Oh, wow. Something so, in your body. Yeah. People are more aware of those kind of things now. It could be anything from just headaches and migraines to stomach problems. And sometimes their doctors even are more aware that, hey, you might want right, to you know, check I mean, in it, with a therapist. Or It's the world responding to what spiritually we've known as believers for a long time, that we are spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. And they yeah. are all connected. Yeah. That is so interesting. I think though. I hear a lot of people say, I've talked to all my friends and they are just, they don't know what to do with me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think relationship issues, just people um, just... Maybe they need a space that's more confidential than maybe their friends. They yeah. feel like they can share with their friends because yeah. they want to protect their spouse maybe or another person. Yeah. Stuckness seems to be a theme. Like I feel yeah. stuck. Like yeah. I want to be here, but I don't know how to get there. Or I want to feel differently or I want to respond differently or I want to be more connected to like a life force kind of, yeah. you know, like yeah. I want to feel more alive. Yeah. You know, um, so the the reasons, you know, are across the boards, yeah. you know. So. If someone's asking, should I see a counselor? Does that mean yes? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know that it's a black and white thing, but I would ask them maybe what they've tried, you know, kind of what they're looking for. Yeah. But there's certainly no harm. I mean, it's a it's a financial and a time investment in yourself. Yeah. And if you find a good one, it's only going to benefit you. So right. right. There's really no harm right. in trying it, right? <laughs> right. It can't yeah, hurt. It can't hurt anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, even the confidentiality thing you're saying, one of the big questions, so I've done a couple of like ask me questions on socials sure. around this Build Your Board series. Mm -hmm. Multiple pastors have said to me, yeah. how do I find a therapist? Yeah. I can't tell someone in our town, mm -hmm. I can't tell someone in our church everything I'm dealing with. They feel that, so it's true. Mm -hmm. They feel it, so it's true. It's true enough to them. Right. How do pastors find a therapist they can trust? Mm -hmm. How do therapists find therapists? Let's do those separate. How does a pastor find Pardon. a therapist? Yeah, it is a tougher, um, you know, I think when we were talking earlier about confidentiality is confidentiality. Yeah. So there's not greater confidentiality I, as a therapist, can provide a pastor than you, say. Yeah. But I, I understand that it's it's more intimidating if that confidentiality is broken, mm. right? It's a pastor has potentially more at stake. One thing I have suggested is if they really can't, you know, word of mouth, I think is great. If they are in a community of pastors, like in my church, I mean, the pastors are really open with each other. So if one has found a therapist they really trust, certainly start there with people yeah. you trust. Yeah. But also another option could be a virtual therapist. If you're in a community where you, it's a really tight community where yeah. you know everyone, yeah. the law limits us to, in virtual therapy, you have to be licensed in the state that we oh, were practicing. Okay. Okay. So I could see a therapist in Knoxville or someone in Knoxville could see a wow. therapist in Chattanooga virtually. Oh, wow. And so that might provide some confidentiality, some some privacy. That is brilliant. Potentially. So, because, and this is a uniquely Nashville thing too, though some other cities like this, a lot of people here are famous. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of people want to find a counselor that mm -hmm. they can go, can I actually tell you or are you going to call People Magazine? Can I actually tell you or are you going to post this on social media, whatever? And they don't because therapists have right. big laws they have to abide by. Even in court, right? Right. Yes. Right, yes. But even you saying that to me, I go, oh, if I needed to process something specific, I could call a practice in Knoxville and say, can you virtually, do you do virtual appointments? Right. Right. Wow. So that that has, I've had a couple of situations where that did provide a, a safer outlet that maybe wasn't intuitive to the pastor. Yes. Or Chattanooga has some yeah. great you know, therapist. So speaking of people that are pastors in Nashville, that would yes. be, we have some, some great options, some cities with some good therapists. So that is such a brilliant hack 
Melody. <laughs> I mean, well, that is brilliant. I would, and you know, it's things that I only know that through experience. Yeah. Right. I mean, trying I know to, that's why you're on that side right. of the microphone for <laughs> right, me because right. I've never one time thought, oh, a pastor could do virtual in a different mm-hmm. city. And the, the exciting thing is that's happening in the therapeutic world is that states are joining what's called a compact. Okay. And that will allow, it's not up and going yet. It should be in the springtime. But where a state like Tennessee was early to join a compact where we can practice virtually across state lines. Let's say if Colorado is in the, the compact and Tennessee is in the compact, it would be super easy for me to get licensed in Colorado. Oh, wow. Um, like just a little bit of paperwork so I could see someone virtually in Colorado in a rural area maybe that didn't have a lot of access to, to wow. therapists. So that's going to open things up yeah. tremendously. Even more, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Right, because there is just something about can someone speak into this who does not know mm-hmm. my community? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. One of the greatest things my therapist said to me years ago mm-hmm. was, I don't care about what your friends think. I don't care about what your family thinks. I actually don't even care about what you think. I care about your health. Mm-hmm. And she was like, so if we're actually doing the healthy thing for you, mm-hmm. it's this, this, this. And I thought, Oh, that's what that is the gift of counseling. Mm-hmm. Is it someone who speaks into my life and does not have the baggage I have mm-hmm. about what everybody else thinks? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, and so to be able to check in with someone in a different city who really doesn't care right. what your right. church thinks. Exactly. Because they don't even know your they don't even know Woodstock Baptist or you know what that means that yeah. you're yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so. brilliant. Do you do virtual? I do. Yeah. Uh, it's not my favorite, yeah. on the, for the record, um, but I, I love it for certain situations. So a mom has a sick kid at home, right. and they just really want to meet, but they can't leave, or the babysitter is sick. Yeah. I love it for that kind of situation. Yeah. So, um, But on the whole, I think I'm glad we have it, and I think there's something missing when we're not face to face, yeah, that there's a the energy, the energy, yeah. the little subtle movements of someone's leg. Mm-hmm. They're you know rocking their foot back and forth. I mean, yeah. just I'm reading so much yeah. that I can't read as much virtually. Yeah. Per- yeah. When Dr. Anita Phillips was on a couple of weeks ago, we talked about in her counseling office where she has clocks, because that's one of the things I have found very interesting about mm-hmm. my therapist right. is I know that she has a clock in my site mm-hmm. and she has a clock in her site. Mm-hmm. What do you, what's your clock situation? Well, I, trial and error. Yeah. Um, I have a little alarm on my phone. And so oh. I just set it and it has a pretty gentle little chime yes. at the at the mark that helps me know to land the plane. You've yes. got five minutes to land this. So yeah. that way I don't have to look at the clock, but the client can see a clock. Yeah. But One of your clients has told me about the alarm. Oh, She's always funny. like, so then the alarm went off and I knew. <laughs> I well, like, <laughs> I, li- I tell them just be be aware that yeah. the chime will go off. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's your cue. And the clients have also told me, we, I don't like that chime. And so I've changed the chime. <laughs> So we don't oh want it to gosh. be. We don't want it to be, uh, you know, disruptive to the nervous yeah. system. We want it yeah. to be gentle. Yeah, so. that's right. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation to share about one of our amazing partners, Relief Band. Nausea is truly the worst feeling ever, according to me. And whether you're prone to motion sickness or fighting morning sickness, congratulations, or going through chemo, Relief Band is the number one FDA-cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting. And here's the thing. Relief Band is natural, works really quickly, and will last as long as you need it. It's 100% drug free, non-drowsy, and has zero side effects. Y'all, it really works. If you need everyday nausea relief or just an occasional cure from nausea because of motion sickness, their patented technology makes feeling sick a thing you don't have to deal with. You can skip the nausea pills that make you groggy because you can wear your relief band on your wrist that gives you, guess what, relief from nausea so your trip isn't ruined and neither is your day. Plus, you get to change the intensity depending on how you're feeling to make it stronger or weaker, which is really so helpful. So if you want to cure your nausea problems fast, check out Relief Band. 
Right now, we've got an exclusive offer just for our friends. If you go to reliefband.com and use the promo code that sounds fun, you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping. So go to R E L I E F B A N D.com and use the promo code that sounds fun for 20% off plus free shipping. And one more amazing partner I get to tell you about. Raycon. That's how it's going to sound in your ears when you're listening to your Raycons, you guys. It's the best time of year. College football, the leaves changing color, cozy vibes, and the holidays around the corner, you know, like Raycon's anniversary. And if you're thinking, don't you mean Halloween or Thanksgiving? Then let me ask you this. Do those holidays also give you 20 to 40% off premium electronics? No, they do not. Listen up, because Raycon's celebrating their anniversary with a sale you do not want to miss. This year, Raycon is turning six. Congratulations, Raycon. In that time, Raycon has really made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. Their everyday earbuds are known for delivering high-quality audio and thoughtful features, like a 32-hour battery life and a perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and lasting comfort. Seriously, I take them with me wherever I travel, and they last so long, and they are so comfortable. And this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So needless to say, there's a lot to celebrate. Let's celebrate Raycon turning six together with their biggest sale of the year going on right now. Hurry now to buy Raycon.com slash that sounds fun and use the code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site wide. That's the code birthday at B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash that sounds fun to score 20 to 40% off off by raycon.com slash that sounds fun okay now back to our build your board conversation with melanie that sounds fun. Um, how does a therapist find a therapist a lot of our friends listening are practicing like you yeah. how do you find a therapist yeah that's that's a similar dilemma yeah um and it's not as much for me the, there is some. Um, i think it's almost like i know a lot about who's in the industry and so it makes me more particular and also just I know a lot of these people professionally so it makes it makes it harder gosh I've gotten really lucky like to to find my therapist and I'm very private about it I talk about her all the time but I don't give her name out because I I just I'm the same way and she is so precious about just really protecting like she won't take any of my friends if she knows about it or yeah. just really protects that space yeah. just so I feel safe like I don't have to be managing what I'm bringing to her I thought that before because I know a lot of friends who see my counselor I've been like are any of us talking about the same man like is she ever <laughs> listening to me being like so I'm kind of trying to figure out and then the girl after me is like so I'm kind of trying to figure out and uh, it's the same dude I've thought yeah, about that totally uh, yeah do therapists need to be in therapy oh, or are they, is that like a part of the gig? I would so hope so. Okay. Because y'all carry a lot. Y- yes. And I, I've, I, I'm, a, I'm a lifer. Yeah. I, I don't ever feel like I'm going to be to the bottom of me, but maybe there'll be a day that, but I just feel like there's not only my own health, emotional, mental, all that, mm-hmm. but it's kind of how other people's stories are intersecting with my story uh, that I have to be on top of, or I could harm someone. Yeah. Right. So I I think it's that's one of the you mean like emotionally harm them. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, just when my story, if I'm projecting, if I'm not clear on where I end and begin, I could project that on a client and not be as objective and not give them the help they need. So that's one of the first questions I would want to know. It's kind of hard to ask out there. But are are you in therapy? But I I would want to know that they're in their own process or they're continuing to process because it is no small thing to yeah. carry all of that and just take care of yourself at the same yeah. time. So I think we all need, whether it's a therapist or a mentor or a spiritual director, yeah, to just to care for us, yeah. you know, in the work. So I would say I would love for my therapist to be in therapy. Yeah. I like that about mm-hmm. some of my therapist friends, knowing right. that when I'm with my therapist friends, I just think for all the stories you heard today. And I don't know what the stories are, but I just think, man, if my counselor had four appointments like mine, I hope she's Mm -hmm. talking to somebody and getting some sort of rest and Mm -hmm. getting getting a place to not hold everything. Right, right. Because it's usually not processing someone else's story. It's just how their story would it stirred up in me, Uh, if that makes sense. So it's not like Annie's 
Right. You know, this was really heavy. You know, it, it, it's just more how it intersects with my story. Yeah. So. And wow. there has to be a place to process that. Yes. So you mentioned spiritual director. Mm -hmm. This is something I cannot sort out. Okay. So help me understand do I need a counselor and a spiritual? What does a spiritual director do? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how is that different from yeah. counseling? I can speak from my experience and maybe a few other people's yeah. experience because I'm not a spiritual director, but I have a spiritual director and they are, I think it, they're both gifts. Yeah. Let's just say that, but they serve, I would say there's a lot of intersection and then there's distinction. So I would say for me, almost like therapy helps me be more connected to me okay, so that I can be more connected to you other people and to God. So the more of me I have access to, true, true me, the more intimacy I'm going to have with you and, uh, and God. Wow. That's so, so it's a process of kind of healing therapy, kind of emotional healing and growth and hopefully becoming more of me. And then spiritual direction for me has been almost broadening my kind of near a view of how I can experience God mm. as me. Yes. So it's it's kind of a more of a like a matter of emphasis. It's kind mm. of like where are you in this story, Melanie, like in your family of origin? Like what did you feel as an eight year old child and what was that like and what could you not say? And and then spiritual direction is a little bit more of like where was God and or yeah. Jesus in the story in Kind of, it's more of an orientation, mm -hmm. almost like you're looking through a lens. It's beautiful. One lens of, in therapy, like, where are you, child? <laughs> and then the other one is like, where is God in this picture in my wow. story presently? Wow. So to me, they've been a beautiful, they've been complementary to each other. Yeah. And I was also in a group of therapists who were doing spiritual direction together. So that oh, was wow. amazing to have you know, people that came with a lot of access to themselves, they could talk about their feelings. But then we were able to talk about not specific clients, but the process of therapy from a spiritual perspective. Like, yeah. so it, that was really the coolest experience of getting to blend the two. Yeah. But they're different, but there's a lot of overlap. I so, love the kaleidoscope idea. Yeah. The different sides of the thing that is so helpful for me yeah i've so, always because i've been like i have a pastor mm -hmm, we all know everybody mm -hmm. knows pastor kevin pastor of the pod right i have a pastor yeah i have a mentor nancy mm -hmm, who they're mm -hmm. getting ready here on the i think it's the next episode i mean so i have a mentor someone yeah. who disciples me yeah. and in that conversation we talk about the mm -hmm. difference of those mm -hmm. and I have a counselor but then people yeah. are like what about a spiritual director and i'm like yeah i don't know where spiritual director fits right when yeah. i have a pastor a mentor yeah. a counselor. Yeah. And I think when I meet with a pastor and I have some great ones, speaking of build your yeah. own board, yeah. but I usually am going to them a little bit more for direction or to talk through a specific. Specific. Yeah. That's exactly issue. right. Yeah. And with, I think I've loved spiritual direction because there's so much space and no one's giving you answers. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And the, to me, I've just needed that space just to ask the questions. Yeah. It just, there's a lot of freedom to ask the questions that you, I might feel a little like, oh, I, I'm in this denomination, so I should think this way, or I'm, yeah. you know, it, there's just so much more room and freedom, mm -hmm. I think, in spiritual Honestly, direction. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. When I'm thinking about spiritual direction for me, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, man, that better be a person I really trust because they are a conduit, not in a woo-woo spiritual way, but mm -hmm. they are literally, we are sitting with God together. With my counselor, I can like process things and leave and go, three out of four, I agree mm -hmm. with what she mm -hmm. said. One out of four, I don't totally agree, and I can just think about it. Right. That feels more challenging in spiritual direction. Yeah, I think it is more, in my opinion, it is more vulnerable to open up that access to our spiritual yeah. being and, and to invite God into the process. Yeah. It's It feels different. It's it's interesting. I'm a lot more emotive in spiritual direction. Yeah, I bet I would be um, too. We, we can... Uh, we could only uh, hypothesize about what that's about, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it just accesses a different place yeah. in me. And my therapist is a believer, so it's yeah. not like, but it's just a different invitation of who's in the room. And yeah, yeah. Oh, that was exactly what I was going to ask you next. So thank you for leading me there, Melanie. One of the questions I got this week was, 
can you put non-believers on your board of directors in your life? If you're building your board, can you have non-believers? Mm-hmm. So that's a that is a big question. Mm-hmm. For me, my counselor, having someone who's operating off the same life map as me really matters to me because mm-hmm. we're making big decisions together about my life. And if they aren't seeing the same end goal as me that preach the gospel, die and be forgotten kind of goal, I'm not sure that I want them helping me drive this particular area of my life. Mm-hmm. Do you think Christians... I don't like to should people around here. Yeah. Do you think it's wisest for Christians to have Christian counselors? Hmm. I've gone in different directions on this. Yeah. I think there are really bad counselors, or unhealthy, I should just say, therapists who are Christians. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think there are really wise therapists who aren't believers. Right. So, <laughs> I want both. <laughs> right. I mean, I want both, but I I think I'd rather have a healthy unbeliever, honestly, than an unhealthy wow. believer, yeah. Christian, just because, uh, for lots of reasons, so yeah. I don't know if we have time for all that. But so, yes, I think if someone is really respectful of my values, I'm thinking of like a financial realm totally. or, maybe, or something like that. Totally. Yeah, that's really respectful of this is what I value. I don't that's value right. a big house. I value travel and relationship. And as long as they can get our giving or, yeah. you know, if they can really value my, you know, respect my values, yes. then yes, I think a person of a different faith or no faith. Yeah. At the end of this month, we do a whole week of coaching, financial, health, relational, mm-hmm, all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm with you. I think I don't need my trainer at the gym. Right. In fact, I haven't worked out with a trainer at the gym who has all the same beliefs I have. Right. But right. when I'm thinking about this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But when but you get right. into the realm of the heart, but gosh, that can get messy because someone could be a believer and just really have some funky theology that right. could really mess you up. Right. So, okay. So yeah. let's talk about that. How yeah. do you find a counselor? Are we allowed to do like first dates? Yes. And do like one or two appointments and if then peace I could, out? If I could do that with every new client or potential client, it would save us both a lot wow. of time and money. You know, okay. I think I've gotten really lucky. I usually do a phone consultation, okay. which is better than nothing. Yeah. It's better than an email because yeah. you can kind of get just more information and they can hear me talk about how I do therapy and it can kind of weed out if something's not a good, some it's not a good fit for either party. Yeah. But a one-on-one face-to-face, oh, that's all I need. Yeah. And I would say for the client too, they get a feel of who you are and how you interact with their questions. And I think that's the best case, but it's hard because people are, you know, kind of in a hurry to schedule. and. Oh, yeah, because they're calling for a reason. Right. They, they're ready to get in and go. And I, I'm surprised sometimes that people don't ask more questions mm. about like my specific training or, yeah. you know, or other therapists. Probably because so much is word of mouth. I guess so. Probably a lot of it. How too, many? But. So one of our friends listening is saying, OK, I'm, I found a counselor in my town. How many appointments do you try? Oh. Do you do, is it one and done and you decide after one, okay, I'm going to sit with this person for the next mm-hmm. year? Or is it three dates, like with <laughs> like mm-hmm. an actual date? I'm, gonna, I'm trying to, I'm putting myself in the, the client's shoes for yeah. a second. I think with a word of mouth, trusted referral, I think I know session one. Okay. But, you know, it's kind of like, how many dates do you go on? You know, before that's right, you know, that's you right. Know, to be fair. Like, right. To be right. fair. So, right. I mean, but I think within a couple, you have yeah. a good, do you feel heard? Do you feel seen? Do you feel, com- I mean, some level of comfort. I mean, yeah. you're going to probably be a little bit nervous, but yeah. I think you can pick up on those things pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And come with questions at, for the client, you know? Yeah. And yet, can therapists meet with someone two times and then say, hey, I'm not the right therapist for you? Yeah. It's harder. I hope y'all would. Yeah. I, I think hope so. that if I'm yeah. sitting there, my counselor has also decided right. they are comfortable. Right. They feel like they can help me. Yeah. 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 That's rare, but it does happen just because you can't get all the information on a 15-minute phone call. Sure. And just knowing I'm I'm probably not the right fit for you because I don't really have training in this area. Yeah. And, you you know, people present with different issues 
in the paperwork, then they actually sometimes girl, that was my story. <laughs> want to that was actually hundred percent my story. Delve into, and so you just yes. kind of know that on the front end. Yes, they might say anxiety, but it's really this other thing. Yes, they may say it's their family and it's their dating life. They may say it's their friendships and it is their work life. Right. Yes. Right. So you get it. I'm pretty on the front end, kind of asking, what is it that you're hoping for? What is it that you want? So. I try to zoom in on that pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's hard though because I I care about someone. If I've spent an hour with you, I'm yeah. already care about you. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's a little harder, but I think it's the best for everyone if you can go ahead and refer yeah. them on and explain why. Yeah, you know. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to share about another amazing partner, Chime. Okay, let's talk finances. Yes, we totally have a financial coach coming later this month. You may think credit score is no big deal, but if you're dealing with a low credit score or no credit score at all, that could be a problem for your future financial goals. That's why millions of people swear by Chime's secured credit builder Visa credit card. You build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started. On top of that, their online checking account has tons of benefits that you will love, like their fee-free overdraft of up to $200. Plus, you can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit all while managing your money on the go. Sounds like a win-win all around. Chime has no monthly fee or minimum balance or overdraft fees. You get access to 60,000 fee-free ATMs, and you can even pay friends through Chime no matter what bank account they use. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash that sounds fun. That's Chime.com slash that sounds fun. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. That link and pretty much every other link you would ever hope for are in the show notes or we send it out to you every Friday in Friday's AFD Week in Review and you are going to want to get it this Friday. It's my first Friday in New York. So make sure you are signed up for Friday's AFD Week in Review email. That link is also in the show notes. And one more amazing partner to tell you about, KiwiCo. Okay, mini BFFs, this one is for you. I love KiwiCo and I mean it. KiwiCo delivers seriously fun learning for kids of all ages. Whether it's about science or sensory play, games or geography, every crate designed by their team of experts inspires excitement, curiosity, and discovery. Sure, you can buy some bath bombs, but isn't it way more fun to make your own? KiwiCo crates are fun and stress-free, so you can enjoy quality time tackling projects together. Their projects are designed by a team of educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting age-appropriate and educational projects. These are real engineering, science, and art projects with high-quality materials. We know how hard it is to find creative ways to keep the kids in your life busy, challenged, and off of their screens. No crate from KiwiCo's Innovation Factory leaves without approval from their toughest critics, kids. The day the KiwiCo box arrives will be your kid's favorite day of the month, and there's something for all ages, from infants and preschoolers to teens and beyond. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash that sounds fun. That's 50% off your first month at k-i-w-i-c-o dot com slash that sounds fun. And now back to finish up our Build Your Board conversation with Melanie. That sounds fun. Counseling can be really expensive. Yes. What do we do if it doesn't fit in our budget? Mm -hmm. The first thing I would say is ask the therapist if they um, do sliding scale is one way to ask. Or like I really on the front end, my kind of boundary is someone meet for, you know, a certain amount of sessions weekly before moving to an every other week cadence, if that's what they decide to do. And I would rather someone pay less and have that consistency on the front end uh-huh. than start with every other week cadence. But therapists yeah. are very all over the boards with that. But to me, I would say just ask if they would be willing to, this is what I can pay. How can we best use this? Oh, right. So I've got $500 right. that I can use for the rest of this year. Right. How sure. much 
Mm-hmm. Counseling, does that get me? How often can I see you? Mm-hmm. What can that? That's a great idea to kind of set a budget ahead of time right. and then go to the therapist and go, here's my budget. Mm-hmm. What does mm-hmm. that and, afford and, me? And yeah, and some, it's something that maybe a, a therapist might be like, I can't do that. Some therapists do have some pro bono slots. You know, most clients are paying full rate, but they, because of that, they can see someone else for a reduced yeah. rate. Also, the Refuge Center in Franklin has a sliding scale, and they have a lot of mostly interns and pre-licensed therapists. Oh, sure, who, who are getting their hours. Yeah, yeah, who are seeing people, and they have a lot of supervision and training that they're getting. So though you don't have a licensed therapist, there are licensed therapists there, but yeah. predominantly the sliding scale people are more pre-licensed professionals and you know so it that's not a bad option you can get a really bright pre-licensed very enthusiastic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's getting a lot of support and supervision and can have a great you know experience or some people that are going back for like their second career that have a more life experience and you could get lucky and get one of them like in my practice i had two three pre-licensed therapists and they usually start at a lower rate oh sure so i think just always ask and then if someone called me if i can't take them or i can i know who may be able to yeah so that's really helpful because that, that that feels often like the barrier I hear mm-hmm. is like, yeah, things are going haywire in my life. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm barely making ends meet as it is. Mm-hmm. So how would I even afford this? Right. And yeah. so yeah. I, I think those are some really good steps we right. could take. And then the other thing that people don't intuitively ask is for mental health. Like, I'm not on insurance panels, but I can, depending on the insurance plan, some people have mental health benefits that they don't know about. Oh, so I could be an out. I of, might be that way. I need to look. I could be an out of network provider, <sighs> though I don't take Blue Cross Blue Shield yeah. or any insurance. Yeah, I can. Clients are sometimes surprised how much their insurance company will reimburse them. This client of a therapist is surprised that that <laughs> right. is an option. Right, and it, I always tell clients oh to, nice. to to ask. Yes, um, gets a phone call. Right, to ask about their mental health benefits, and sometimes it's a. Not to get too technical, but a deductible they have to meet, and then they get, let's say, fifty percent back yeah. instead of eighty percent. I'm literally could, walking to our HR office after this yeah. and being like, "What are my mental health benefits?" Yeah, because we just got insurance, so right. I had no. I, I'm sure yeah. it's in the paperwork. I right. own the company. But, I had to sign right. everything, but my HR but because a lot of therapists, it. at least in my networks, don't take insurance because for a lot of different reasons. Certainly. But but that is one kind of way to get people money get the yeah. money back yeah to help with the cost so. yeah that's amazing okay so melanie do we let's keep the conversation going about money mm-hmm. do we always need therapy am i paying for this for the rest of my life is it okay if it's seasonal is it oh it is seasonal okay it is seasonal it is seasonal okay and i kind of laugh saying i'm a lifer yeah i don't know if i wasn't a therapist i don't it's not always the same level of need for me, but I like to have that accountability and that place to go. Yeah. But if I weren't, yes, it's absolutely, I love seasonal therapy because it has been a beautiful thing to see someone, let's say, before they were just dating. Yeah. And then they kind of get to a place, they came, they got what they came for kind of thing. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll call well, in that season of therapy and they're having their second, their first baby. Yeah. And they'll need to, they want to re enter for a different reason mm-hmm. or, Yes, I think, yes. And sometimes the season is seven years and sometimes it's six months. Yeah. But yes, I always say you're always welcome to come back. But I I like very clear endings because I think that really helps with closure and just to honor the process. And then they're always welcome to come back. Yeah. So, yes, I think it's very much a seasonal thing. My counselor and I had this really interesting conversation that I will retell you now where, because I'm in New York for two months Mm -hmm. where she was like, so are we going to do virtual whatever? And I kind of said like, I think I need to use the tools you've given me. Mm -hmm. I will call you if I need you. Right. But I, I feel a little bit like give me two months to use some of these tools that we have really worked on, particularly in the last year. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't this like, I'll never see you, but it was this like, I think I'm going to take a window Mm -hmm. Knowing that I can call my coach at any time, knowing my counselor is available to come out and help me. Mm-hmm. But also, what if I use my tools? Absolutely. I think that's where the real growth often happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you learn to ride a bike and then you go ride you it on your and own. You, yeah. I am going to fall. My yeah. bike, I'm going to scrape up yeah. my elbows. And there's support available, like you said. Yeah. 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 And you, 
I have felt that. I've even, since I saw her last week, I've had two decisions that I had to make that in my life historically I would have mm-hmm. gone, okay, mm-hmm. maybe I should just yeah. make an appointment or maybe I, and then I went, use the tools. Mm-hmm. What do you know? And you learn to trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a little bit of that balance of like, Counseling has, you know this from my life, counseling has changed my life. Hmm. I mean, I am, I I cannot imagine the pain I would have caused other people Hmm. Mm -hmm. that it magnified compared to the pain I've caused other people the last decade. Sure, sure. I can't can't imagine. And some of the things I have, the Lord's invited me to suffer through, I don't know how to done it without Mm -hmm. support. Like I need all my friends and my therapist, yeah, and my spiritual director, yes, and my pastor, and my, you know, yes, like, I yeah. need my board. That's yes, it. That's exactly absolutely, it. Absolutely. And yet, also for the first time, Melanie, I feel this like use my tools. Mm-hmm. I have my tools, mm-hmm. and so it's never felt seasonal to me. And and it isn't seasonal. I'm not like walking away from therapy by any stretch. Sure. But it, but I have felt this like mm-hmm. use the tools. Yeah, I think clients feel that, and I think is on my end as a therapist. We can both kind of feel when that season's coming to an end. And yeah. a lot of times they're just a little bit scared. The client is a little bit scared to let go. Right? Yeah. And when, as soon as I tell them you can come back anytime, yeah. they're like, okay, I think I'm ready. Yeah. And I love that moment. I mean, it's the yeah. first time I've ever left her office without the next appointment on the books. Mm. And I felt that. I felt mm-hmm. the like, oh, God. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm not here. So it's different. I'm right. not here. I'm going to be right. in New York, you know. But I've never left that office and not made my next appointment. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, okay, you have tools and Mm -hmm. you have her phone number. You are fine. You have her phone number. You you know how to find her. Right. Some of our friends listening are in a marriage that has imploded yesterday Mm -hmm. or their life, their work life imploded this morning. Mm -hmm. And they call a counselor and the counselor says, yeah, I'll call you back in the next 24 hours Mm -hmm. and we'll make an appointment in the next week. And that feels like I don't know how to survive between now and then. Mm. I, not ending life thoughts. Right. So that is 911. That is go to the hospital mm-hmm. right now. But life imploding, how do I wait a week? Mm-hmm. Talk to me from the therapist side, because that's happened to me before. Talk to me from the therapist side of like, I feel like I need an appointment in the next 30 minutes and mm-hmm. you're available on Tuesday. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. From a therapist, gosh, that's tough. Yeah. I think it, unless it's life or death. The, it's not life or death. Right. Yes. And what typically sometimes what happens in those two weeks is some things are resolved and other issues, yeah. the real, you know, maybe a different issue arises. So even what they call, the client may call about in a week or two before I can get them in, it, something is shifted or, yeah. you know, so I, it's hard because yeah. it's, you want to be able to get them in more quickly, but you just can't serve them well unless you have a, a space available yeah so it's kind of worse to kind of rip off the band-aid and not be able to see them yeah consistently than to just wait and hold and use your other resources and you know it almost feels like part of the counseling experience is your counselor knows Mm -hmm. what they're doing Mm -hmm. and if they can't see you till tuesday okay oh yeah that's what you're saying if you're already connected with a therapist either oh either either way yeah you're exactly right either yeah either either way So what about suicidal thoughts? What about life-ending thoughts or harming your child thoughts, harming yourself, someone else? Mm -hmm. Is that a counselor phone call? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you're already established with with someone, those are the exceptions to the boundary rules for me. You know, that is a phone call that I will take. Okay. And then if I'm out of town, you know, if I'm out of town and can't meet with them, it's a... It's a different, it's emergency contact call or it's a medical assistance call or yeah. something like that. What if you don't have a therapist and you're having those thoughts? Yeah, that's what's hard is people don't probably have resources readily available. I and mean, I don't have it in front of me, but there are a lot of texting options available for mental okay. mental health. Um, we'll put some in the show notes. Yes, so we can definitely can find yeah, them. Yeah. Can. And, you know, people don't always feel comfortable, but it's sometimes less scary to text someone for help if you don't have another option totally. than to make a phone call and, you know, people show up at your house and, yeah. you know. So sometimes that's been kind of a, a lifesaver, truly, Literally, yeah. in, in the in the interim. Yeah. I have a friend who has two little kids, and she was – the first night she had them by herself, she had to call someone else and say, this feels too much. 
I feel I'm not doing this well. I'm freaking out. Can you come help me? Mm-hmm. Right. She she was not thinking of harming her children, but she was right. thinking of right. I am overwhelmed in a way I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And once she said it out loud, mm-hmm. our other friend yeah. was able to be like, OK, look, yeah. it's eight o'clock. One of them goes down at 830. I'm coming right now. And in my life, mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, when my brain is spiraling, mm-hmm. if I will tell anyone else, mm-hmm. it stops the spiral. That's right. And so that feels helpful. Oh, yeah. And I think some the a text, maybe it's a voice, a phone call, but just that's just an easy other person on the other end, just yes. that you can can mirror, even yes. absorb some of the the stress and the pain. Yes. That you're not alone. Yes. In it. So Yeah. yeah. And there I just with the amount of friends we know are listening, there's someone who thinks the only way this is going to get better is if I end my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what would you say? I'm sorry, that is a lot of pressure on you, Melanie. But mm-hmm. what would you say to someone listening who goes, there is no help for me. I, I should just be done. Mm-hmm. I think there's always a way. Yeah. You know, me too. but we we also need other people. Like yeah. we can't, none of us were meant to do it alone. Yeah. So there are people available, even if you don't know them yet, that yeah. that can and will care and and are available to help. So yeah. I think there's always a way. We just can't see it by ourselves. Yeah. So. And a friend and I had this conversation and they said, it is never shameful to call 911. Mm-hmm. There is no embarrassment yep. to calling 911. Yep. They are meant to save your life mm-hmm. in a thousand ways. Yeah. If you cut your hand while you're cooking, mm-hmm. you are not embarrassed to call 911 to get help. Right. So do yeah. the and same they're, they're for they're your trained, They're trained for that. And yes. even the voice on the other side yeah. of the phone just can be comforting and just to help you know that you're not alone and there's yeah. help available. So yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I just think I, I want to trust that that's an important thing for us to say today. Mm-hmm. Okay. What did we not say about counseling that you want to make sure we say? Hmm. There are no bad or wrong questions to ask your therapist. The therapist okay. can take care of themselves in terms of— Oh, that's of, good to say. You know, I think people—and I don't really mean, hey, where'd you go on vacation kind of questions, but that's fine, too. But but I mean more of, like, what is your training? Do you have experience in this area? I think I find that people don't ask enough questions. And I know they sometimes don't know what to ask, but there's no wrong— a question to ask mm-hmm. if you're trying to find the right fit and it's also there's no shame in asking hey can we meet like we were saying earlier and just determine if this is a good fit yeah um, I think people are afraid of maybe offending someone or yeah that's gosh this person has to be someone you feel safe yeah. with it, if you don't feel safe like there's I would rather have someone that I feel safe with than someone with amazing skills. Right. 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 So a counseling it, ninja that I don't feel safe with, I'm still not going to feel safe gr- with. Yeah, your your guard's going to be up. Your protectors yeah. are going to be yeah. at work. So I'd say that and a real change takes a long time. Yeah. It's not a quick fix. I mean, there are coaches and people, life coaches for the solution base, yes. but real deep change it just takes time yeah so i think for me i'm kind of in it for the long game just knowing it's just long patient work yeah so one of the gifts at, from going to on-site workshops in 2018 is they say and that's when i went they said counseling in general but particularly on-site changes your life two degrees hmm not 180 degrees. You don't walk out of here a different person. That was actually my fear before I went, Melanie. I was like, what are they going to uncover about me? It's going to make me not Annie, you know? So silly. Now, it was not silly at the time. It was very scary at the time. But your life changing two degrees does not look different the day you get out. But six years later, Mm -hmm. my life looks very different. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they say something like, from Antarctica to change your course two degrees ends up the difference between landing later in the U.S. or in Europe. Right. That's that's a great metaphor. Yeah. And that has helped me a lot. The yeah. long game of therapy mm-hmm. is let's just do two degrees. Yeah. And if there's something that to invest in, it mm-hmm. seems like your own mental and emotional health, at least for me, yeah. is why not invest in yourself in that's that right. way? Because at the end of the day, that's all you have is is you, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and your health. Yeah. So, yeah, well, 
you're amazing. You're just one of the best. So, well, thank you for well, so having me. It's fun to, to see you again. Too. I know, yeah. I know to see you in person. Yeah. Well, will you say the name of your practice again? Come alive. Come alive counseling. Okay. Yeah. We're we'll in link Barry to Hill. it, and then people can either reach out if you know wherever they live, if they're mm-hmm. particularly in Tennessee. But okay, so. Melanie Rogers, because the show is called That Sounds Fun. Tell me what sounds fun to you. No, I just got back from Telluride, Colorado on kind of a scouting trip. And what sounds really scouting? fun. Scouting? Well, for what sounds fun to me is taking a group of women oh. on a therapeutic adventure trip. Maybe do some Melody. fly fishing and some hiking and some paddle boarding and some maybe four by four adventures oh. and kind of have a just take my office into the outdoors a little yeah. bit more. So that's what's sounding really fun that's these days. That's cool. Was mm-hmm. the um, scouting trip profitable? Like, meaning, did sure. you learn what you wanted to learn? Did you find things? Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite places in Colorado and have some good friends out there. So got to stay at the, a fly fishing ranch and kind of scout out the cabins. and Yeah. The, yeah, and just think, kind of go out there with a different lens. Of yeah. Kind of thinking more than my fun just kind of what could be yeah. the therapeutic playgrounds out there so wow that's amazing that sounds fun to that's me. a great idea we will be there We're just, we'll be there you can come we'd love for you to come <laughs> along oh y'all isn't she so awesome oh she's like one of my favorite therapists in the actual whole world come alive it's such an incredible counseling resource for us here in Nashville but also for any of y'all I'm just so thankful for her I feel like I learned so much in this episode. Now, if you want a full list of the resources from our Build Your Board series and how to find the guidebook, go to AnnieFDowns.com slash Build Your Board. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Annie F. Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the places you may need me. That is how you can find me. And I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home. Do something that sounds fun to you, and I'll do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me, I mean, I've never lived a Monday in New York, you guys. So... Here we are. That just sounds fun to me as it is. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you back here on Thursday as we continue our Build Your Board series with none other than my mentor, Nancy. Y'all get ready. She's coming on Thursday. We'll see y'all then.